It's because of his grace. I believe in that big picture. Amen. There is a bigger picture than what you can see today, no matter what you're going through. And that's we have the same power that Paul had. It's that same power that rose Jesus from the grave. We just have to believe it. Just have to believe it. So this morning, let's just tell him we believe. We believe in who he says he is. We believe in him. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. You walk me through the fire and heal all my disease. I trust.
have some praise. And let's welcome our pastor as he comes. Give him a good hand. Wow. I don't know. I heard Tom talking about this is the best church. I think we need to go ahead and realize one more time. This is the best praise team on the planet. Come on, give the gentleman a nice hand, if you will, in the praise team. Let him know we love him. Thank you so much for lifting our spirits, encouraging us with the word and with song. How many know the song is still the word? Come on, with music added, it's still the word of God, and it brings life and blessing. Turn to somebody and tell them, you look better than you did last time. Looking younger and <laughs> happier and healthier. Okay, one out of three is not bad. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated if you like today. I just feel something sweet in the spirit, and I know God's got something good for everyone. How many of you had an awesome week? Okay, maybe I should not ask that until after we encourage you a little bit. It's been a tremendous week for us. We came in on Monday. Tom picked up the hitchhikers at the Dayton Airport, and we were able to get back home and enjoy a wonderful week. I want to say to all of our friends and ministry staff all over the um, St. Louis, Springfield, Glen Arm, Illinois area, what a great time we had. We were hosted so well. And I just want to tell you, we miss being at home. How many know it's good to go, but it's always good to get back home? There's something about my pillow. <laughs> Someone said, I don't have one of those. Well, whether you have one or not, how many of you have your pillow? And sometimes there's just something about having your own bed in your own place. I, I, I'm, still, I'm still thankful that I have a bed and I have a house. I have a car. Anybody remember when you didn't have a few of those? <laughs> Okay, I, I guess I'm talking to just those three or four over there that understand what I'm saying, but I'm very thankful that you're here today, and I'm thankful for what God is doing in all of our lives. God is doing great things. Amen. Come on, let's say it, but just stay, just stay alive in, with this as long as you can. Say it, I am blessed more than I have been, but not as much as I'm going to be. And uh, we were in the service the other night preparing for our conference in Illinois. And, and uh, as we were going through all those things, the Lord put something in my heart that I, I, I have you ever had something you knew it, but you needed to know it? I, I mean, you knew it, but somehow it never did become real important. And so about a year ago, we were in Illinois and we were, uh, Annie McRae was one of our guest singers and she got into a song and we know the song. It says, he breaks every chain. The people got excited and started realizing that God does break every chain. And they, I know some of you won't understand this, but some of us have been around fire a little bit and get excited. Anybody else know it's okay to get excited? If the world can get excited and Ohio State can get excited and the Reds can get excited, Spirit of Truth can get excited. Not to show off. How many realize if you're excited, you can be excited if you want to? Not everybody was leaping and jumping and praising God in the days of Jesus and the apostles, but how many, when they got excited, they got excited. And so... I was watching them march around the church and they were just so thankful to break off chains and then it hit me really hard. Some people, it's just a song. They still have chains. Would somebody say it with me? I'm going to break every chain. And I learned something that I, I know it takes me a while. I, uh, in, in a month, I'm going to turn 68. It's hard for me to get that out. Usually it kind of doesn't want to come out. But considering the alternative, I'm glad that it's coming on September 1st. I was born on Labor Day. And I reached down and I, I picked up a piece of chain and noticed it wasn't a, all of a whole chain. It was just one link. That is not a chain by itself. But it's the shackles and the links connected to you that make up your chain. Some of you have some awesome links in your chain. Some of you have some other kinds. You can cut them off today. I don't mean to walk away from all of your friends and those people that don't like you, but sometimes you have to separate yourself. There are chains that are good. Kathy and I have been chained together, equally yoked, for 45 years. That's a good chain. Come on, somebody say, has anybody ever pulled on it, tried to break it? Oh, yeah. How many know there's all kinds of stuff in the world that tries to rob you from the blessing of your links? But today what we're going to do is we're going to, to make this very real to everybody in the house because if we can cut off the stuff that's robbing you from going forward, it's worth it. If we can help you to break the shackles that are binding you, because I think everybody in life, you connected with some folks you don't need to be connected with. I guess I preach you all perfect here in Washington Courthouse, so I'm talking to people that are in other areas. How many of you have had negative influences, people lie on you, talk about you, hurt you, wound you? Uh, walked away from you, abandoned you. How many of you have been through some of those things? And sometimes we just need God to take some of the shackles out of marriages. Still in the wrong bu building today. 
But how many of you realize if you're equally yoked in the Lord and the Lord has put you together, you all sh should be able to get along and you men realize this and it'll help your marriage. The women are always right. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. You know that's true. Everybody say, you finally figure out that they're <laughs> just a year. <laughs> okay. You, okay. Say it with me. The women are always right. I'll add an addendum to that on some level or by their observation or the way they think about it. Because see, men uh, think a little different, so we're right the way we think, and they're right. Boy, I'm not going to get out of this, am I at all? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Terry, for helping me know I will never get over this. But I want everybody, if you will, to just say along with me, I am going to check out my past and find out what links need to go. And if I can get rid of the wrong stuff and the stuff that's pulling me and dragging me down, I'll have space to connect with some people that are in my future. How many of you are not over? How many of you don't want your life to be over? How many of you have a few more days, hours, years, something? How many have, come on, I can't do that many funerals in a, in a week. How many of you have a future before you? So if you can break the chains that hindered you, we can connect with some new people. So I picked up this little particle of a chain. I actually cut it with the, the snip so that I could get a visual of this. And I realized I right now have nobody connected on this little piece of chain. But there are people that God wants to put in my future to bless me. There's people that I want to connect with. I, I shared the other day we were, in, uh, we were over in uh, Columbus. And uh, one of Dr. Lester Summerall's, the mother of the church, Sister Vivian, brought a demon-possessed girl there. I know we don't talk about that a lot because a lot of people don't have demons. They just have an attitude. And most people think they have a demon, it's just their flesh. They don't know the difference in the carnal realm. And the, Help me right here. So we spend a whole lot of time delivering people that are already free. When we could be having a picnic. How when the Lord saves you, He saves you completely. And then you need to deal with stuff that you know is not trying to get back in. You're like, can I get an amen right there? So whom the Son has made free is free 50%. No, everybody say indeed free, which means completely free. Now, if you want to go back into the old path in some areas and deal with that and say, well, I'll deal with it later, that's up to you. But I'm when the Lord sets you free. He sets you free. Amen. Boy, I lost three people right there that really needed that one. Uh, but, but hear this, because there, there's some of the times in our life that we don't grab this message and we need to because I am connected. When that demon-possessed girl came in, she had Dr. Summerall, a powerful man, friend. He went back to minister to her. And she just laughed at him so much that he couldn't even pray for her. So they brought her in from Indiana and went back and ministered to her. The Lord set her free. Uh, she came back to the service with her, her family later, her children later. And, and we, we were able to be a part of her life. All the rest of her life we were a part. And then I realized there was a reason I needed that demon-possessed girl to come. Because the mother of the church that brought her went back to South Bend, Indiana. And I was able to be on international television with a, a new friend. I was able to be on international radio to uh, four point something billion people. Potentially because of one lady that was connected to my chain for a moment. How many realize it's very important, your connections? I'll give Leo Calvin a price credit for this this time and never again. But how many know he always says it this way, your connections determine your directions. Am I right? And so one girl that was able to find freedom was able to connect us with a man that helped us to get on international television. I, I brought that tape from Brother Summerall. He said, but Don, would you like to have this master copy and, and use it for your ministry? I said, I would like to go on television. So I took it, and then I didn't have anybody to edit it. So I, I took it over to Bill Swad's church where there was a man named David Brainerd that was producing his television programs and car commercials. And David and I met, and I got a connection that helped us now to reach on many other stations around the world. But it would look at me. It was one connection. Don't miss that one connection. You can miss one connection and miss your direction. David's been a part of our life all these decades. He knows more about my ministry than anybody because he listens to my messages more than anybody because he edits more than anybody. But if you look at the connections that you have, you realize if it hadn't been for that one day, that one event, that you didn't even like what was going on, it had to be a connection to your link so that God could take you somewhere. And sometimes God has to pull you where you don't want to go automatically. Am I right? 
uh, just another addendum. I was in Phoenix, Arizona uh, 10 years ago or whatever, sitting there preparing to go minister at, at Pastor Canada's church. And I looked around, I thought all the blessings going on. And then I looked up and I saw the same David Brainerd and his wife leading praise and worship in Phoenix. They would not have known Pastor Canada in Phoenix from uh, Etna, Ohio, if it had not been me, the connection that put their... Are you still here? You do not know where you're going to go or what you're going to accomplish, but you must realize you've got to keep your link open. Cut off the old and connect yourself to the new. But somebody say, I need new connections. So really all this is is one insignificant connection. Did I say that one insignificant, seemingly insignificant link that you can connect to at your choice? You have to decide who you're going to let into your life. How many have let some people in and they were not good links? I don't mean kill them, I'm just saying just get away from them. Cut them off. Am I right? If you notice on a chain, they usually weld the piece together after they make it so it's even more powerful at the connection. We got some people, the enemy's trying to take them out of our life, and we need to make sure that we hold on to those people. Am I right? The, the significant part of this that I want you to get a hold of is there's times that the chain that God has given to us is ours to use the way that He wants us to use it. And, and let me just say this. I have an old chain back there that's all rusty, and it's got a big hook on one end, and it's got a smaller hook on the other end. And I was reminded of it the other day when Kathy and I were driving, and we saw a man on his riding lawnmower went over a cliff. Don't know why he went over that cliff. But I noticed that there's a pickup backing up that had a chain attached to connect with the man in trouble to pull him out of his ditch. But somebody say, there's good chains. And you have one. Every one of you ought to have a hook on the end of your chain to reach down to anybody that needs to be picked up. Don't stay in the valley with them. Don't stay in their depression with them. Don't stay in their bondage with them. But swoop by, pick them up, and give them an opportunity to get back on the road again. How many of you realize that's what the Lord is willing to bring? And, uh, you know, sometimes we think uh, links are okay and we think chains are okay just because they're shiny. How many of you, just because a chain looks like bling bling doesn't mean you need to get connected with it? Because sometimes it's seductive. Sometimes it's what you do not need in your life. Am I right? Let me give you another example. I think it, it's something happened just a couple of weeks ago. Some of the, uh, the rooted wanted to go and they wanted to see the, the Carrie Job concert. Uh, problem was that when she's in town, you better hurry up and get a ticket because it's going to get sold really, really quickly. So I happened to be on my way after a funeral and I stopped over and went in and I said, Can't, are there any more tickets available? They said they've been gone. And so I, I thought, you know what, maybe, maybe I'm going to take a chance right here. Anybody ever drop names? Anybody? <laughs> Why am I the only one admitting stuff today? So I went and I saw the, the television staff and the sound engineers and the lighting people were there. And so the door was open. I just went ahead and walked in, you know, because that's what we do. <laughs> and I walked up to the people that are wiring everything, getting it ready. And I, I looked over one of the guys. It looked kind of cool. And I said, uh, just want to ask you a question off the wall here. Does anybody know Mitch Waddell from Dallas? They said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's the guy that runs Gateway Music and does all the music for the Gateway Church. If you don't know Robert Morris, I just dropped the plug for Thank you, Brother Robert. And after he does all that, he plays along with the team. Well, he's the one that does that at the church where Carrie Job sings. And I thought, well, you know, if I can get a connection, maybe I can get a ticket. <laughs> Anybody ever name drop to get? God, I ask you to let the spirit of forgiveness come in this house for those that are refusing to lie. And let us not know they know the banker. They know the president. They know somebody. And even though it didn't work that time, it almost worked. I said, well, how'd you get that connection? Well, it just happens to be that same videotape that David produced for me that took to Channel 51 in Columbus that allowed me to meet the A&R man for Channel 51 that was Mitch Waddell. Are you still here? Became a very close friend, did the work for us and, and some, some projects for us. So it took that, can I say it, 30 years ago, somebody that I met that almost got me into Carrie Job. <laughs> Anybody understand that you can't make connections happen? You can't cause connections. God does. And if God is one, can I say this? It was reminded, Angie preached me a message this morning and she said, when you're in connection with God's plan, He is always going to fulfill His plan. If you get involved with what God wants done, you're going to be blessed because you're involved with what God is always going to fulfill. He will do it. So you've got to make up your mind to get connected in the right direction. Amen. Somebody say, I need to break every chain. <laughs> it's quiet in this house. 
Sometimes we need to break off the chains that keep hurting us. Anybody still have some resentment against some folks every time you think about them, you snarl? No? Thank you again, Lord. I've almost got them perfect. Help me. <laughs> Anybody ever think of someone you realize you haven't quite forgiven what they did to you? See, forgiveness is a choice. You may still remember it, but you don't have to be angry about it. Am I right? The Bible talks about that in Jude, that the angels are chained in reservation for, for their judgment. Chain symbolize something that doesn't leave. It's something that protects. Chains are good. When I was young, I, I had a bicycle. I loved my bicycle. It was my car. It was my freedom. Anybody remember the old days when that's all you had was the bike? Oh, the skateboard. Help me right here. And I would never forget going down the sidewalk and I was so thankful when that big old Rottweiler dog came running toward me wanting to eat me for breakfast and all of a sudden his neck almost snapped and he almost... Because the chain, thank God for the chain that stopped him. How many of God knows how to chain the enemy from taking from you what is rightfully yours? Anybody want God to break a few more chains off so that you're not still hooked to the same stuff? I've been hurt. I've been wounded. I've been offended. I've, been, I've, been, I've gone through everything that you can go through. And I've made a choice that I'm not going to let that rob my life. I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. I'm not going to continue to hurt over stuff that happened 30 years ago. I'm going to love my enemies. Amen. Passed by a church today and Kathy said, did you see that sign? It said, love your enemies. It makes them mad. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of funny, but I don't want my enemies to get mad. I'd like to have them become friends again. Yeah. Okay, so you don't want your friends back. There's six more billion. You can try something new on them. I remember when I was thinking about when I had a bicycle. I, I still have one. It's hanging, I think, in the garage somewhere. But I remember it was that chain that let me go where I needed to go. Anybody ever get your body part hung in the chain or your toe? Or anybody ever remember the ride of the bicycle? You got your clothes caught in it and then you had a wreck because your pant leg got stuck. Anybody remember the old days before modern things came? All the old folks are grinning because they're saying, don't tell these kids we can maybe use that trick on them. But there's chains that are a blessing and there's chains that protect what you have. Amen. Amen. There's chains that will threaten you to rob everything that's good in your life. Right. When I started looking at this area of, of scripture, I realized that the, some of the people in the Bible, they were not like Joseph in prison uh, unfairly. But see, Joseph not only was in prison for nothing but a lie that said he was sexually attracted to some woman and uh, tried something and they put him in prison. He didn't do anything. You don't have to do anything sometimes to become shackled. Somebody else can shackle you. Just look around the room and see who you'd like to have a part of your connection so you know they will not shackle you. But they'll help pull you where you want to go. Am I right? Does anybody think that if you had ten brothers that hated you and sold you and put you in a pit, you think you might have to deal with that in your mind? See, sometimes the change, and I'm not going to delay a whole long time but sometimes the chain that you're fighting the most is the one in you can I say it if all you have is one link you're chained to yourself and you're your own worst enemy because see you could let go of that stuff but you won't because you're not your own friend sometimes you can heal yourself am I right because all you got to do is let it go. Uh, somebody pulled me. No, no, no. There's nobody on your chain. It's just you. How many mad people are bad because they won't heal themselves? Anybody enjoy being alone? Or do you hate that person too much to want to be alone with them? There's some people can't stand to be alone. They have to be in a crowd. You know what it tells me? You got a messed up link. You're connected to your past. You're connected to your emotions. You're connected to the hurt, the hate, and you won't let it go. See, on this, is, this chain, it's not really metal. It's plastic. And I cut it so that I could open it and I can make myself available to some more links going where I'm going. Don't ever close up your link and cut people off. Some of the most important people in your life, you haven't met them yet. Wow. We were in Springfield, Illinois, and on Saturday afternoon, we're ministering to our ministry ministers that were there and I was bragging and boasting building up a, an older gentleman he's a part of our has been for many many years and his name is pastor George Bucks he's been here many times with his wife Doris awesome people great pastor 
And uh, when God brought them into the ministry, they came out of the high church where they didn't believe in any moving of the Spirit, and they wanted some moving, so they had to separate. And because of Brother George Bucks, he came and he needed covering, so we said, we'll be glad to do everything we can to do that for you and all of your friends. And I was talking about what a blessing he's been. How many people I met, and matter of fact, I would not have been in Illinois if it hadn't been for those connections. Shackled to those people for the good. Amen. And after the service, he came over and said, Pastor, I just want to tell you something just so you can understand. You are building me up and boasting on me. But let me tell you somebody that used to play keyboard right over here when I was pastor here, what, 20 years ago? He said right now he's not playing keyboard anymore. He's the president of King's College, a major institution in America. And another young man that used to be up here with us working, just a young man now, he's the second person in command at Rama Bible Institute under Kenneth Hagin Jr. in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, and if it hadn't been for that man of God, Brother Bucks, those people would not be where they are doing what they're doing, but because he connected with their chain. Anybody want God to bring some people into your life that are rich and good-looking and famous? <laughs> now the unmarried ones can lift your hands. God knows how to bring the right people. I, I can take you back 50 years and tell you people that have been involved in my life for a season that, that I, it was only for a season, but they were famous and they were, you know, important people and they were, you know, powerful, but I, I didn't need them to rule my life. They just, I needed them just for a day. Anybody ever need that right banker to give you a loan? Just that, even if they get fired next week, you need that right person. You need that one person to introduce you into your spouse. Four people are saying, I wish that person hadn't introduced me to my spouse. Well, break off that chain. I'll give you a new link today. You can start all over again. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? You can tell when you hit a home run because people start grinning or giggling or getting nervous. Hey, man. I, I, I was connected early in years to, to some people that were important people. And, and, and notice, they didn't stay in my life a long time. I'm not even around them anymore. But they were important. They were significant for the time. There's some of you who were invited to meet a doctor and he was the only one that could help you. Hey, man. There's some of you moved to the right neighborhood because that neighbor's the one that you ended up seeing your daughter or your son marry. Are you still with me? God had you move here and there so that he could connect you with people that you needed. You didn't need them last year. You need them right now. I came to tell you this morning, some of you are in this room because you need right now what God is placing in your spirit. And God is going to release the past so you can enjoy your right now and your future. He's going to connect you with blessings. So what I have to get you to understand is be very careful who you connect with. So why did you throw that out? Because I just made myself available to connect with you. Be careful who you connect with if you're connected with me. Spirit of truth is known as a loving church. Don't mess that up. Don't go out and act like a nut. Don't be going to the hospital and causing trouble. And act like you go to spirit of truth. If you're going to act like that, act like you go to the first Methodist. <laughs> now, I better not say that, brother. My... Pastor friend's not there any longer. He'd get me in trouble. How many of you realize we represent each other? So if you're not going to represent me right, don't act like you know me. <laughs> don't drop my name if you're going to act like that. Help me right here. Because I've had people say, you know what, I know Pastor Don. I don't even know him. They used my name because they thought it might get him through the door. That They only had a real weak chain link but they thought if that gets me what i want i'll act like i know him there's other people act like they never see me in their life <laughs> they break that shackle real quick if they think i'm a detriment can i get one amen? amen jesus chose 12 disciples look at me he connected with them and they needed him because nobody else could take them where they needed to go if you notice that when jesus went into the the, the bedroom of, of jairus's daughter he walked and he didn't take everybody in he took the ones that were closely connected with him peter and james and john why because he had a greater connection and they were not going to say i don't think she can get healed she looks like she's too dead there's no way no he said y'all stay out in other words, I'm going to break the shackle off of you and off of me because I won't take that fear and doubt into this room with me. I don't want to be associated with your connection. Boy, there's been times I wish I had some bolt cutters. <laughs> Anybody ever been shocked at your friends, the way they talk? And what they... Anybody ever act like you don't even know them and they're your kids? I mean, they're, they're your mother-in-law? <laughs> Somebody say, break every chain. Break every chain. 
The Bible said that when Joseph finally got out of prison, he becomes the number two man on planet earth, if you will. Everybody from the known world came for grain and food because of the wisdom God had given him. Everybody wanted a connection with Joseph. And the Bible said about that time of the famine getting ready to come, God gave him a wife and two sons. The first son, he named him Manasseh, and I always wondered kind of what that might have been. Manasseh means God has allowed me to forget my father's house. You know what he's saying? I still got some chains in my mind about how bad they treated me. And you know what? When I told my daddy the dream, my daddy rebuked me. The greatest man on earth, his, well, he had been Jacob, but now he's Israel. When your spiritual leaders don't believe in you, that hurts. When you know your dreams are of God, but even the religious leaders don't believe in your dream. I believe he had some chains in his mind he had to get rid of. You know what he said when his little baby was born? He said, God has helped me to forget the pain of my father's house. You know what he did? He broke those chains out of his mind. The biggest change you'll ever have is not the one wrapped around your tire. The biggest chain you'll ever get rid of is the one that's right here. Say it with me. It wraps around my world. And today I'm going to be free. Can I just tell you this? You can't make America perfect. Or I would have already done it. You can't help some people. They don't want your help. You can't change the world. But you can change your world. Look at me. You're the only one that can change what you've allowed to be inside your world. I said, well, I'm hurt. Well, that's your fault. You won't let it go. It's not that you did it, but how many you got to let it go? It's your fault not to let it go. You didn't cause it. You didn't want it, but you choose to keep it. Anybody want God to bring some sanitizing solution? Just clean out your brain. Come on. How many like for God to get rid of some of the bugs and flies and spiders and cockroaches and come on snakes that you've allowed to, to just have free reign in your mind? Not anymore. I don't have enough room in there any longer. I don't need anything to remind me of pain so I don't have to have another problem. i got enough past problems. I just relive them all the time. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to break every chain and every shackle that's upon my life. Brother Brent, will you help me for a moment? I want everybody, if you will, to stand to your feet. Anybody realize that sometimes in a, in a, in a moment of pain or unfairness, can I just say it? In a moment of hurt, you can have a divorce. And I've watched divorces ruin people's lives for the rest of their life. Just somebody that probably should never have been attracted to them, should never have married in the first place. But that relationship was so strong and so powerful that you lost faith. You lost confidence. You lost your self-esteem. Don't let anybody else control your self-esteem. Don't let anybody control your self-worth. You are what God said you are. Carol, take hands right there. Take hands for a moment. Honey, the Lord just broke off and unshackled all of that right now. And the Lord said to tell you, do not become unequally yoked with pain. Whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Would the whole body say to her, we agree with you. For a brand new day of freedom. Never again will those hurts feel that way. Or those memories chain you to your past. You're free. You're free. I want everybody to look for just a moment, if you will. I, I, I've got a slave here. He just came in from the slave pit. Brent, just drag him around a little bit. Just, you're in control. Don't break his neck because I don't have a car. I only one, got one chiropractor in the room can help you. But so why would, he ever, why would he ever let that man drag him around? He gave him his chain. He released it to him, gave him the power to... Treat him like a wild animal. How many of you realize it's up to you who you allow to connect with you? I heard a story last week. It was about the, I guess it's the Asian elephants when they raise the little baby elephant. As soon as they're born, they put a steel chain around their foot and chain him to a pillar. And every time the little elephant tries to move, he just realizes, I, I, I'll never break free. So after a while, he just stops and gives up. Well, when they grow up and they become big, they bring him to America, put him in the zoo. They don't have to use a chain and a pillar. They just put a little bit of rope and a, and a little stake because they've already got it in their mind that they're chained. Some of you look at me. You're not chained any longer, but you're chained in your mind. You're not bound, but you're bound in your mind. 
I agree with that. I, 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 I see that about myself as well. Remember the cowboys? I, I'm Indian, so you cowboys. Remember when you used to... They'd take their horse up to the, to the bar or whatever they were going to, and they would jump off the horse, and they'd wrap that little rope around that little... All that horse had to do is move and leave. But in his mind, he was shackled. I'm going to tell you something. Whom the Son has made free is free indeed. And God is unshackling you. Brent, today I'm going to take this thing off of this, this guy right here, whoever he is, and I'm going to release him. And these shackles are never going to go around his neck again. Come on, somebody say, I have got a whole lot of shackles. A whole lot of chains. Stretch that out, if you will, a little bit. See how far you can make that go. How many of some people, they have, a, they have a lot of shackles. I want you to get rid of everything that way from your past. And I'm going to ask you to begin to reconnect with some good folks. I'm talking about some anointed people, some people that are in God's plan, some people that are connected to the ministry. I'll say it again. If you're involved in the plan of God, you have nothing to fear. God's plan always works. If you're involved with it, you'll live until God is finished with you. You'll see the miracles and answers in your life every day of your life. And the Lord said today, tell my people that I'm unshackling them from everything that has hindered them. Lay aside the sin and the weight. Can I paraphrase? The chain that has so easily beset you. And run with patience. You can't run when you're shackled. You can't run when you're bound. I made a statement around here about a month ago and I'll make it again because it's very important. You'll never know if you're still chained unless you try to move. Once you get up and try to go somewhere, you'll find out if there's still a shackle. And I want you to go somewhere this week. I want you to point your hand toward this, if you will. Everybody point your hand toward the front. Father, I ask you right now, let this symbolic chain that could fetter us, that could keep us from walking out of this building, let the shackles in our minds, our hearts, that have now passed on to our children and our children's children. Father, I ask you tonight, uh, today, while we're breaking the chain off of our life, break it off of our children, our family, our relationships. Save the hate monger, the defiled, the broken, the wounded, those that are angry at a God they don't even know. And help us as the body of Christ to begin to open our our little link and make ourselves available to be a new chain that pulls people up and not tears them down. I release everyone in this room from the shackles that have bound you, from the fetters that have held you. I release you to the new connections that are going to determine the future promises of your life. Stand with if you will for a minute. I want you to look for a moment if you see this this chain it's, it's got two with no cuts the one in the middle determines what I'm connected to I'm still breaking off past connections there's people I don't have time to associate with because they're just there to hurt and wound I've got too many people in front of me that want to love me amen I've had people say, you need to go do this and that. I said, no, I'm too busy with people that need my help. People that require me to be a, there with them. They, they need my help. And there's other people just find, trying to find a ploy to drag me back down. I don't have time for that. Am I right? So the shackle that is here, I make up my mind as easy as removing this. I can get rid of those things that are back there so that I can connect with Terry and Cindy and Linda and what God wants to do in my life. I want you to take this. And I want you, as we release, open yourself up for new beginnings. It's not always abuse and hurt. Sometimes it's loss that we can't change. I speak peace to you today. My sister, we are in this thing together and we are a part of the same heavenly chain. Bound to eternity and reaching out with an open link to somebody that needs to join our chain. The chain of deliverance, the chain of victory, the chain of safety, the chain of a new beginning. So today I speak peace to you. And I call all things new in Jesus' name. I want you to reach over and touch someone beside you and tell them we're in this connection together. You're not by yourself. You're not alone. God is reconnecting. Well, I'm just glad you're here today, you and sis. I'm glad. I want you to let that be a reminder. Some people, they put a smooth stone in their pocket just to remind them not to stress out. But I'm going to ask God to begin to just begin to bless. He'll deal with the past things, and He'll deal with the past threats and hurts. And sis, I release you from threats and hurts as well. 
I have no power outside of Him, but He just wanted to tell you today that He's reconnecting you to a greater joy. When our heart is broken, pain comes, trust is broken, hurts. The Lord said, open up your chain and allow me to connect with blessings. I just speak new blessings starting this day. In the name of Jesus, for the glory of our God, I command you blessed. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Come on, say together, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm alive to bring life. I have hope so that I can give it away. How many of every one of us every day need to break open our chain and say, is anybody here that needs me to pull you out of a pit? Does anybody need to connect? If you get a hold of my chain, I'll get everybody that I know to pray with you, to agree with you, and I'll pull you out of that hole that you're in. The Bible said they had to reach down and they had to get Joseph and pull him up out of the pit. Somebody that had to do that. It happened to be Judah. I said, why Judah, his brother? Because Judah means praise. Praise will always get you out of the pit. Can I say it? Praise is a part of God's heavenly chain. Prayer and agreement is a part of God's heavenly chain. I got to stop something. Just everybody bow your head for just a moment. I'm going to ask God to take away the threats that things won't remain strong. No chain is stronger than its weakest link. But I'm asking God to make the weakest link the strongest link. Whatever that takes. You can't walk in pain alone forever without it affecting your heart. I release you to the peace that God has planned for you. I release you to the restoration so that all the other things that have infiltrated your life will be broken off. You've wept silently long enough and right now you need to just let that pain out one last time and allow God to do what you can't do and fight what you can't fight. You know we love you. But God is the one that's going to reach down deep inside of that link that's been torn open in your heart. He's going to begin to connect himself and make a strong chain of victory for you. I speak peace in Jesus' name. But everybody in agreement say, we have your back. We love you. And our prayers will be links in your chain. Every step you take till all things are finished. Fulfilled. Is that okay? Hold on to that. Just a reminder of the presence, a reminder of the promise, a reminder of the hope. Didn't mean to run you away, Rachel. Let me. Say this with me out loud. I'm ready to break every chain. Look at me. How many of you recognize that the chain that is broken today is right here? Whatever you've connected with that's still hurting, let it go. It's almost like I can see chains melted under the fire. They won't have an effect on your life anymore. Would, would you just do it? Would you touch the one beside you and tell them, I'm in agreement with you. I'm a part of your chain. And I'll be strong so that I don't disappoint you. I'll be strong so I can pick you up if you're down. And I want you to be strong so if I'm down, you can pick me up. You can restore and you can encourage my life. Thank you, God, for those that came to Tabby and for all these years. What, four years now? She's been able to be free and remain free because she's connected to somebody that's greater than the pain in her heart. How many know God knows how to release every one of us? Say it out loud. I'm ready to be free. And it starts right now. Uh, over in the container, there's a bunch of those that are pre-cut. And if you don't have enough, I want everybody to look up at me a minute. We some months ago realized that we needed to break every chain. Everybody say, I got some bolt cutters around here. Somebody went on our toy trailer and they cut the lock off with it. I said, if they can cut off locks, I can use this to cut off locks off people. Everybody say, I need one of these. <laughs> now, some of you would never bring it back because you got too many of those pieces of the links of your chain. If you will, the gentlemen are going to, to do this for me. I'm going to ask you if you'll come by this way. We're going to put this link in your hand. But look, I don't want you to come if you don't believe that God is going to stop what has linked you to your past. If you're not willing to open up your heart and allow God to bring new connections and new links into your life, then it's a waste of time. I want you to keep this thing in your purse, ladies, or in your pocket, gentlemen, as a reminder. i got to be careful who I link myself with. I don't want to be on the wrong job. I don't want to be connected to the wrong people. I don't even want to buy the wrong car. Amen. Anybody ever buy the wrong you go and you didn't go? Come on. How many of God knows who to bring in your life? 
He knows how to move people out of the way so they don't connect with you adversely. I know God wants to do this for us and He's going to be allowed to do that. Don't let the enemy ever again tell you you can't change the past. Yes, you can. It's starting right now. Loose it and let it go and the victory begins. Can we walk around that way if we will? Come on over here, gentlemen, if you will. I want you to put one of those in everybody's hand. As you give them the link, I'm going to ask you to say it. I am free from the stay forward. Come on, let's pass by if you will. Come on, Tabby, be the first one in line and I'm going to ask you to come by while the music in the song plays i want you to become free today and we're never going to be entangled with those same things ever again i release the blessings of the lord upon you command the promises of the father thank you lord. Oh. Break the shackles, break the links, break the connections that have hurt us, break the connections, Father, that held us into the past. Open up our link to those that will be a part of our life, those that you've destined to be a blessing in our life. Strengthen us, O oh Father. Courage us, O oh Father. Reward us, remind us. Thank you, Father. It's in this house today, so I'm going to say it and set you free. Don't let one bad day and one wrong decision in your life define you. Don't let one incident in your life define you. It bothers me when people say, oh, doubting Thomas. Excuse me? They all doubted. He's trying to believe that a man could raise from the dead after they mauled him and hung him and killed him and put him in a tomb. The Bible said that he declared to the disciples... Jesus said, I'm going to go see Lazarus and wake him from his sleep. And the other disciples said, Lord, they tried to stone us to death last time we went in that region. You know what Thomas, doubting Thomas said? If we have to die with him, we're going to die with him. That didn't sound like a doubter to me. They talk about old cousin, Simon Peter. The Bible said he cursed that he did not know Jesus. He swore that he did not know him. How many realize he didn't go around cursing and swearing all the time? He had one bad day. When his life was threatened. Should we define people by that one day? How many have ever had a bad day? I'll wait till everybody gets your hands up. Anybody have some regrets? You hope nobody knows what you did. Nobody took a picture or had a video or put it on YouTube and it went viral. It could have. It could have. Just because they didn't have it available. They didn't get it. How many realize we've all sinned? Don't define me by my past. Come on. Don't define people by their past. Open yourself to be a blessing to somebody. Because that's what you are. You're a connection in their life that can bring blessings. Well, yeah, but they fell down. Pick them up. you got a chain holding them. Lift them up. Don't drag them down. Don't wrap it around their neck. 
lift them. Promise me this day. Say it, Lord, I'll be a blessing. And those that you connect with my life are destined for eternity. For my life, for what I minister, and for those I can touch. Use me for your glory.